big down the stretch. Florida State wins the opening tip, and we are underway from Tallahassee. Bob, Florida State has had a tendency to turn the ball over in situations against teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and they cannot afford to do that today. You've got to get the open shots, and they've got to knock them in the basket. Sura saves that turnover. Lewis over Lewis. He had a huge game against North Carolina. Scored 26 the last time out, and it looks like he's comfortable playing against the Tar Heels with that little turnaround jump shot. Well, he may be the only one in the nation that feels comfortable <laughs> against the Tar Heels. I think Harold Dean finds it all right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he draws the foul on Reed, does Rasheed Wallace. Andre, long uh, known as foul prone here at Florida State. A redshirt senior from Miami. Well, he's ha he has his hands full today. Pat Kennedy knows that. Rasheed Wallace is just very difficult to guard. He runs the floor so well. And once he gets set up down inside, he's got strength. He's got quickness. This young man just has all kinds of ability. And this is one of the perplexing things about this Carolina club. Dean Smith's team is third in the country in field goal shooting, but last in the ACC in free throw shooting. They compensate for that low percentage, Bob, by getting to the foul line a tremendous number of times. This is Greer, Sura. North Carolina starting in the man-to-man -man defense. Hops to the corner. Sheet Wallace really pushing against Corey Lewis on the inside. Corey short with it. Sora got a hand on it. Rebounded by Williams. Here's McGinnis operating. Stack out. Blocked by Lewis. Oh, shades of what happened to him against Virginia last weekend. Here's Wallace stripped by Reed. And the runner by Collins. Rasheed Wallace before the stop. The basket is good, Bob. The drive to the basket by Collins. He gets the shot up in the air, and Rasheed Wallace pushes, pushes Corey Lewis out of bounds. I saw them signal that the basket was good. Dean Smith is off the Carolina bench saying no basket. Well, that the officials Larry Rose and Lenny Wirtz are discussing it right now. Now, Pat Kennedy wants to know. Now, this, this is a play. Wallace is not going to foul the shooter. There's the foul right there against Corey Lewis. And that's the correct call. They've now changed it. The basket doesn't count. The foul was against Corey Lewis, was on Wallace fouling Corey Lewis, but if Andre Reed had been in the act of shooting, that basket could have been counted. However, very clearly from the replay, he was not in the act of shooting. Halfway in the pipe and out, but Florida State leading 2 0. Controlling here with Greer out front. That's why you have more than one guy out there on the officiating crew. Yeah, get it right. That's the, the bottom line. Sura for three. Lewis inside. And gets it in. Boy, Wallace nearly picked up his second foul. Rasheed Wallace now having picked up that first foul, Bob, you're right, has to be very, very careful. So even though the basket doesn't count, Florida State scores. Stackhouse, what a catch. Just didn't get the roll. And Rasheed is fouled. That almost was a very productive trip down the floor the last time for Florida State. The basket was ruled no good the first time, but they got the basket the second time. Now here's Corey Lewis. The Florida State people are up screaming for a foul against Rasheed Wallace in that particular situation, but Corey Lewis scoring his second basket of the game. Looks like that young man's ready to play. Wallace finally hits a free throw after missing his first two. 63% at the line, as you see, and look at that field goal percentage. 68% to lead the ACC. Carolina finally gives the scoreboard company four to two Seminoles. The scoreboard will have plenty of company on that North Carolina side for the days. They scored 100 against Florida State in game one in Chapel Hill. Just rain threes on Pat Kennedy's ball club. Oh, what Sura. a cut by Sora. Calabria crashes. And look at Sora fight back to get the ball. Collins. And the long arm of Stackhouse clears to Calabria. Williams well, you got to guard alone. him. Ah! 
Wallace inside. Carolina resets. Wallace is coming back. Oh, they call an offensive foul. On the spin move, Wallace threw the arm out there, and he better be careful. If he gets a technical, that'll be the third foul. Dean Smith sending Zwicker in the game. Now watch him. That's a pretty good call right there. He just moves right into Corey Lewis. Corey Lewis is standing there waiting for him. He spins right into him. You know, Rasheed Wallace, for all his talent, and it is, he's got great talent. He still tends to lose his temper now and again. Well, they'll have ample time to cool off on that bench. Two fouls and three minutes into the game. Lewis. And Zwicker has the rebound. And here's the situation, Bob, where the Seminoles have to take advantage. And they've been getting some good shots. The ball's going around the basket and coming out. Sura going for the steal. Calabria fights him off. Here's McGinnis for three. And he's got it. A 41% three-point shooter, Jeff McGinnis, puts Carolina in front. Bob, that is a bad play by Bob Sura. You cannot go for the steal unless you're going to get it because that allows North Carolina a five-on-four situation, and they're going to find an open three. Now North Carolina in zone. Sura. Oh, what a move. On the floor, trying to go to Reed, it's out of bounds. That's a very, very difficult pass to make down along the baseline, throwing it to Andre Reed, who's cutting to the basket. They tried to force that one, Bob. If you're going to come, if you're going to upset the number three team in the country, you've got to execute the easy plays, not necessarily make the spectacular plays. Stackhouse, speaking of spectacular, draws another foul. Boy, he goes to the line a ton. Jerry on the drive that time, drawing the foul on Corey Lewis, his first. It's going to be very difficult for Corey Lewis to guard Jerry Stackhouse out away from the basket. That's Stackhouse plays the power forward spot for North Carolina, and generally a bigger guy has to match up against him. Stackhouse has the strength to play with bigger guys inside, but he's got the quickness to go right past him on the perimeter. Makes the free throw there. 28% of Jerry's points come at the foul line. And he wears that blue and white mouthpiece that makes him look like a hockey player. 15.58 left in the first half. We'll be back after this message from Bud Light. ACC basketball brought to you in part by Toyota. Bob Rathbun, Dan Bonner, and Tallahassee, Florida. Carolina leading 7-4, but Dan, neither team shooting well. The Seminoles are just two of nine from the floor. Bob, they've gotten a lot of shots. You can see right there, but right at this point in the game, we have as many turnovers as we do field goals. North Carolina stays in the zone, but tries to extend. Remember, Rasheed Wallace went to the bench very early with two personal fouls. Collins, the runner is good. Game's first bucket, he averages just about 18 a game, 7-6. I, I think defensively for Florida State, the key is to eliminate penetration. You've got to prevent your man from getting past you and creating an advantage situation for North Carolina because they will capitalize. Stackhouse trying to penetrate on Lewis into the hands of Calabria. I guess Calabria needed to be further away from the basket. Yeah, he's no good inside. He's got to get out there from 22 feet. What a season Calabria has oh, had. Fantastic. Loose inside, but it's Collins. Going to get home. James with four. Florida State takes the lead. Bob, the penetration problem applies on the other end, too. North Carolina can't allow Florida State to get inside for those easy baskets. Swicker with the hook. Lewis the rebound. on the break, and he's fouled by Calabria. Bob, that is the Seminoles at their most dangerous. Bob Sir at full speed with the ball in the middle on the fast break. North Carolina actually has three guys back, but that is a precision pass right there by Bob Sir to James Collins, who's just having a super year. Gets fouled by Calabria. Collins, of course, a sophomore. When you start thinking about all the sophomores in this league. What Hope they stick around. Absolutely. What a tremendous sophomore class in the Atlantic Coast Conference. James with six quick points. 
You know, Collins, interesting stat about him. He's the only ACC player who's been in double figures in every game this year. He's been in twin figures in 29 strikes. He's got six on the board, and FSU leads by three. Donald in the bucket. His first basket of the game. Donald Williams, the senior from Garner, pulls Carolina within one. That was a good offensive play, negating some pretty good defensive play, Bob. Gene Wallace, along with Landry and Sullivan, waiting at the scorer's table to get back into the game. Donald Williams doing a nice job running off some screens. Stay with Sarah. Lewis. Thanks. And hits. Corey with six. Seminole's doing a great job taking advantage of the absence of Rasheed Wallace to get it inside. Stackhouse misses the three. And it's Collins. Boy, he feels it. Deflected. Stolen by Collins. Good hands by Greer. Gets it back. And Lamar misses. Collins misses. And he's fouled by Stackhouse. Bob, early in the basketball game, the Seminoles just quicker to the ball. Florida State beating North Carolina to the rebounds, beating North Carolina down the court. And Rasheed Wallace is back in the game. Dean Smith knows that his big fella has two fouls. Sura. Well, you know he would love to go out in a blaze of glory today. Well, it's going to be tough for North Carolina to pressure Florida State in that zone. But the Tar Heels, it's going to be tough for him to play man-to-man -man with Wallace in foul trouble. They very nearly lost it again to the Tar Heel. Here's McGinnis. Shot clock at eight, seven, six. Sullivan forced to take a three, missed it. And a foul on Landry. Everything going FSU's way here. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned for the Continental Airlines Fast Takes Contest. Brought to you by Continental, the official airline of the ACC. North Carolina goes back to the man-to-man -man defense. They need to put some pressure on the ball. It's been too easy so far for Florida State. Lewis inside to Reed. Andre to the bucket. Jam followed by Lewis doesn't go. Corey gets it back. Landry there swatting right, Dribbled the ball. Sullivan knocked it away. He had Rasheed Wallace off his feet. All he needed to do was turn and jump into it. Williams. Foul. That foul's on Sura. First on Bobby. Florida State. With Sura hitting a big three. On a 13-3 run to take this eight-point advantage. 13-3 run with Rasheed Wallace on the bench. We said they had to take advantage, and they did. Now Wallace is back in the game, and he's got to be careful that he doesn't pick up that third foul. McGinnis. <laughs> he almost threw that ball right past Sullivan. Sullivan caught that one with his chin. And Reed muscling Wallace inside. Draws his second foul. Rasheed Wallace can play inside or outside. And once he gets position, watch what a great job he does maintaining position. He got the elbow there into the stomach of Andre Reed, and that's what Reed's complaining about because Reed picks up the foul. We will be back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. 11.51 left in the first half, and Florida State leading Carolina by eight. Donald Williams has left and gone back to the Carolina locker room. We'll try to find out why and bring you up to date on Donald Stewart. Here's Landry in the ballgame with McGinnis. Calabria against Surrey. Carolina just two of nine from the floor for 22%. There we are bragging on their fine field goal shooting, but a cold start today. Landry gets the roll. Well, they shot 60% in the last game against Florida State. 
And that's a big basket by Pierce Landry with Wallace in foul trouble even though he remains in the game and Donald Williams in the locker room. Somebody on that North Carolina bench is going to have to step forward today. Here's Sura. Pat Sullivan now matched up defensively against Corey Lewis. Rasheed Wallace is going to guard Andre Reed, and that will allow Wallace the freedom to get off and get inside a little bit. But he certainly didn't go after that. Lamar Greer finger rolls his first bucket. And I think if Wallace doesn't have those two fouls, he definitely goes after that one to try to block it. Good feed to Wallace inside, and he scores. Rasheed's first field goal. 19-13. That was a great catch, and then he maintained his balance and got that ball up on the board. I'm more impressed with him every time I see him. Collins for three. Landry gets it back. That was a great block out by Landry to keep Corey Lewis away from the basketball. Wallace. And Corey Lewis picks up his second. Rasheed Wallace showing you right there why he is so valuable to the North Carolina team. Reed and Lewis both now with two personal fouls, and they've gotten all their fouls trying to defend Rasheed Wallace. Reed very nearly came up with the steal right there, but the great catch by Wallace in the middle of all those hands and drawing the foul from Lewis. So now Florida State's inside, guys, each of them with two fouls. There's Donald Williams, Dean Smith, glad to see him back from the locker room. Telling him, obviously, go in there, score a lot of baskets, get us the lead back. So it will be Donald coming in for Jeff McGinnis. He'll operate with Pierce Landry in the backcourt. Wallace, Stackhouse, and Calabria up front. For Florida State, Avery Curry has come into the game. Avery, the freshman from here in Tallahassee. And with Derek Carroll in the ballgame now and Corey Lewis out, Florida State goes with a smaller lineup. And North Carolina comes with the pressure. Car uh, Carroll with it. Not a Curry. <laughs> sir, sir, sir grabbed that one with one hand. Yeah, it's either going to go to Bob or to Bill Guthridge. One of the two. Here's Sura kicking it out to Curry. Nice, nice pass. And Carroll misses the three. What a bounce from Stackhouse. Wallace lost it. Reed takes it away. Curry zips it to Collins. He misses the shot. Back up top, it comes to Stackhouse. That's a Globetrotters routine. Calabria for three. And he hits it. Well, they saw that one. One too many times in Chapel Hill. Dante had eight of a Carolina school record 17. And the Tar Heels are within two. Curry, not bashful. Andre Reed inside. Couldn't get it. Wallace has got to be careful. Landry scraps for it. Great outlet to Stackhouse. Foul by Sura. And that's two fouls now on Bob Sura. Dean Smith, it's very clearly you can see him asking for the intentional foul. And Dean just got a technical foul. He was outside of the coach's box. And then now he goes out to midcourt to protest. Well, he's going to get a second technical foul. He's not supposed to be out of that coach's box, and he's all the way at midcourt. Right now, Larry Rose is feeling the wrath of Coach Smith. Bob Sura coming from behind, slapping at the ball. Dean Smith calling that an intentional foul. You know, that's a play that happens all the time. So first we'll have uh, the dispensation of the foul shots by Stackhouse. Gary's two points coming at the line earlier in the half. That pulls Carolina within one. And now Jerry trying to tie it up. And he does. 
Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vital presents the Direct TV dish out the winners sweepstakes. Now Sir will shoot the tap. <laughs> Dean Smith still over there giving all the hand gestures and everything. The fans here asking for another tee. I'm a 73% foul shooter. Registered FSU's first triple double earlier this year against NC State. Misses both free throws. So we remain tied. And there's a question now, Bob, about what is the score? Should be 19 19. Well, that's certainly Dean Smith's point. In the middle, there's Peggy Sura, Bob Sura's mother. And the scoreboard now reflects the tie score. 8.57 left in the half. Collins triggers to Curry. Well, so Dean Smith didn't lose anything with that technical foul. Sarah missed both of the technical free throws. North Carolina, Bob, very noticeably has turned up the intensity over the last couple of minutes here. And they've been able to get their transition game going, and they're awfully tough in the transition. Carroll. Nope. Collins wiggles inside. Couldn't get it to go down. Florida State has had all the opportunities they could possibly want, Bob. Lewis now with those two personal fouls matched up against Wallace. And that's the low post pass on way. 23 left in the half, and here's Jeff McGinnis coming back in for the Tar Heels. And it'll be Pierce Landry to go out. Tied at 19. Florida State has lost seven straight to the Tar Heels. Trying to reverse that trend in their home finale for 95. Man to man for the Seminoles. McGinnis. And the whistle stops play underneath, and Corey Lewis just picked up number three. Here's the inside battle between Lewis and Rasheed Wallace, and Wallace just wraps his arms around him right there. That's a foul. The official making the call behind can see Corey Lewis with his arm wrapped around Rasheed Wallace. That's a call that the official has to make. Lewis now with three, Andre Reed with two. Rasheed Wallace has been fouled five times in the first half. And Rasheed is three of six of the foul line. He's got a one and one coming. Rasheed Wallace. Coming off a 23-point, 12-rebound, six-block shot game against the Cavaliers Sunday in Charlottesville. This is the front end and Reed rebounds. Well, Andre Reed, of course, the second all-time leading shot blocker for Florida State, so that's okay on the defensive end, but they really lose a lot on the offensive end with Corey Lewis on the bench. Carroll. And he forced that one. That's two in a row now that Carroll's tried to force over Jerry Stackhouse. Jerry runs it down on the wing. Kicks it over to Calabria for three. Got it. Dante Calabria is as dangerous a player as there is in this country in the transition, getting down and getting in position for that three. The leading three-point percentage shooter in America. Sura tries to answer and does. That was a long three right there. Bobby was six, tied at 22. Calabria drives. Reed had it blocked, but we also have a foul, and Andre picks up his third. North Carolina, Bob, continues to attack the basket. Once again, Bob Sura going for the steal, not playing that good, solid position defense, and Calabria able to get into the middle. So now both Reed and Lewis have three personal fouls, so Pat Kennedy's got to go further down on the bench. Luckman going to come in the ball game. Carolina has outscored Florida State 11 to 3 to tie it up at 22 and now Calabria sends the Tar Heels in front. What a year Dante Calabria has had for North Carolina. Two for two at the line. He's got eight and the Tar Heels lead it by two. Time out on the floor in Tallahassee. Knowles trailing by two. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. ACC basketball brought to you in part by CarQuest Auto Parts and by etc. The foul difficulties mounting for Florida State. Freshman Corey Lewis to the bench with three. And further down the bench, Andre Reed with three personal fouls. So it's sophomore 6'10, 240, Kirk Luckman in the ballgame now to try to 
Anchor in the middle for the Seminoles. Got a look at Andre Reed's mom, Winsome Harris. Also honored with her son before the basketball game. Carolina leading by two. This is Curry. Boy, Surrey really got blasted inside. Tried to set a pick for Luckman. Curry rejected by Wallace. Rashid, third in the ACC. That is 69th block shot this season. That's a good play by Florida State. You may as well give that one a try. Wallace with the three, the two personal fouls, but Rashid Wallace does a great job keeping his body away from Luckman's blocking that shot. And they go inside to Kirk, and he gets the easy two. Bob, you know, 74% of the field goal attempts by this Florida State team come from their perimeter players. The inside guys really don't shoot the ball very much relative to the perimeter guys, and so I think it's a good idea for the Seminoles to get the ball into the hands of the inside people, and right at the moment, the only real inside guy in the game is Luckman, and he does have some offensive skills. Here's Landry. Stripped, and Luckman picks up the foul. Well, that center position. Using all 15 today. <laughs> <laughs> and as many else as they have to have. Here's Sullivan coming back in the ball game. But again, the key to that particular play was the penetration that North Carolina was able to get. A screen out top, not well defended by the Seminoles. And when you get into the interior of that defense, it's much to the advantage of an offensive team on the attack. Pierce Landry with his third point. Right guard Pure Power proud to present the ACC Player of the Week. Look for this feature prior to the second half tip off. Pierce with four, Carolina by two. And North Carolina likes to go with a small lineup. Sullivan in the game for Rasheed Wallace. Sura working against Calabria. Goes baseline. Runs it up and in. Bobby with eight. Boy, he had very little room on the baseline, Bob. I don't know how he got past that screen. He must have been behind the basket. How did he make that shot? McGinnis. Stackhouse with the line drive from the lane. Jerry's first field goal. That's what Stackhouse can do. You defend him with a bigger guy, he blows right by him. You defend him with a smaller guy, well, he does a nice job keeping Stackhouse from blowing by, but Stackhouse gets the ball up over a smaller man. Syrup again on the baseline. Knuckle ball that one. And it's out of bounds. Now that one went off the foot of Syrup. Duke Getzel has a better look, and Lenny Works gives the ball to the Tar Heels. Well, Sura was struck by the ball when he was laying out of bounds, so the first thing out of bounds that got hit was Sura. The lob inside, and oh, look at Stackhouse. What a move by Stackhouse. Boy. And Pat Kennedy's tell <laughs> telling Derek Carroll that he can't let Stackhouse get behind him like that. Avery Curry with the high bank and Stackhouse high to claim it. Here's McGinnis operating and scoring. Jeff McGinnis certainly doesn't get the national notoriety of Stackhouse and Wallace, but I dare you to find a point guard who's having a better overall season than Jeff McGinnis. Florida State takes a timeout, 5.03 left in the first half. Carolina 32 and Florida State 26. Let's look at an MCI proof positive instant replay, and Dan will put this under the category of give him an inch. Well, this is called blown by two guys. And watch, sir, get to the baseline and then glide back out. He's behind the basket right now. And watch, he jumps back onto the court, slides the ball in the basket. There you go, Bob, sir, all those things. Plus, more. Oh, absolutely. Then you add to the fact that his nickname and real name both have O in the second position. You know, who knows what kind of a stat you could create. <laughs> McGinnis. was Bob Sarah. Eight region. points today, three rebounds. First team All-ACC performer last year. Bob, you cannot say that the Seminoles have not had their opportunities. They have had 32 field goal attempts in this game compared to just 17 for the Tar Heels. 
unfortunately for the Seminoles, they're only shooting 11 of 32. You know, and a lot of those shots, Dan, are from point blank range. I mean, they had two footers, three footers that they missed. Could have a different story. Sura rolls it off the rim and Sullivan. Bob, plays. and that's exactly what you're talking about. Bob Sura with a wide open 10 foot jump shot, and it doesn't go in the basket. Not very much you can do about that. They're going to get the shots. You got to make them. Now, Derek Carroll gets called for a foul trying to guard Stackhouse. And one of the reasons why North Carolina only has 17 field goal attempts is that they've had 15 free throw attempts so far in the game. So Corey Lewis is back in the game with the three personals. Wallace is out with two personals for the Tar Heels at the present time. Meanwhile, Stackhouse back to the foul line scores his ninth point. He is five of five at the line today. But well, now Corey Lewis back in the ball game with three personal fouls. That is a very, very dangerous, dangerous move. And Pat Kennedy with 4:30 left in the half. Kind well, of I, I, the dice well I think this shows you what Pat Kennedy feels about this basketball game. He obviously feels that this is an extremely important point in the game, and he wants his best guys in there. Lewis turns it over. Sullivan. Over to McGinnis. Lewis just backs off. And Jeff buries the three. Eight points for McGinnis. Carolina now leading 37-26. At one point, Florida State led 17-9. And Pat Kennedy is going to take another timeout. 4.06. The time remaining here in the first half. And Florida State has burned two of their three allotted timeouts. This has been quite an ACC race here in 1995. We wanted to show you the three teams that are tied for first with three losses and what their schedule looks like the rest of the way. Jeff Jones in Virginia will take on the Deacons in Winston-Salem tomorrow. Then it's Virginia Tech at Maryland in the final week of the regular season. No easy road for the Cavaliers, certainly. If they're going to share the lead or get the lead, that's a tough road right there. And a tough road to also for Gary Williams and the Terps to Duke and to Charlottesville. And the Tar Heels will take on Wake Forest and Duke at Chapel Hill. The Wake game is on Tuesday. Now, here are the standings. Well, Bob, the key stat right there as you look at all those three teams, and there's the three teams we're talking about with the three losses. But that WFU, Wake Forest, is really a key factor in there. If Wake Forest can win the remainder of their games, and a couple of other things break, for example, if Virginia would lose to Wake Forest but beat Maryland, and if Wake Forest would beat North Carolina and then North Carolina would win its other game, you could conceivably have four teams tied at 12 and 4. And if you've got a four-way tie at 12 and 4, Wake Forest would win the tiebreaker and could claim their first regular season title since 1962. Here's the Carolina scoring run. Very impressive to really seize control of the game. And Florida State now walks it up. Pat Kennedy using two first half timeouts to try to get this game back in his favor. Now, and what this does for Dean Smith, it allows him to keep Rasheed Wallace on the bench. Wallace a key factor in that run. He came back in the basketball game and the Tar Heels really turned things around. Collins with six seconds on the shot clock. North Carolina has not been very aggressive when they've been in that zone, Bob. Now, Florida State's really got to get it done on the defensive end of the court. They've had the opportunity now on this possession to set their half-court defense, and now they've got to execute it. Here's your problem matchup right here. Stackhouse uses his dribble, so Carroll can come out and get him a little bit. Calabria, what a move! Dante with 10. Sir has got two personal fouls as well, so he's got to be careful defending there on the inside. North Carolina stays in the zone. 1-3-1 one, one look. Better find Collins and Sura in this particular defense. Sura penetrating and fouled by Zwicker. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. Zwicker picks up the foul right there, but you know, watching Bob Sura for four years, as we've had the pleasure to do, it's almost like his follow-through on a shot involves falling on the floor. <laughs> 
his ninth point of the game. Here's Wallace coming back. Swicker goes out. Missing Serge come in here for a cameo. Brings up the point about Sullivan's return. This is Pat's fourth game back, and it really gives Dean Smith the opportunity to get Stackhouse and Wallace, foul problems notwithstanding, a little bit of a breather. That should make Carolina tougher come tournament time. Well, I think the return of Pat Sullivan will really be beneficial to North Carolina. Knocked away, taken away by Luckman. Greer finds Sura trailing. Carroll, yes! He's been in a three-point shooting slump, but looked good on that one. To pull Florida State within five. No basket. Carroll's going to get the foul. Stackhouse just blows by him. Pat Kennedy, I mean, there's nothing really more that he can do. He's had about everybody on the team guard Stackhouse. None of them was very great success. 12 first-half fouls against Florida State. Stackhouse goes to the free-throw line almost eight times a game. Just does a great job creating situations where he's attacking the basket. He gets fouled a lot. This is that free throw. Here's Sullivan coming in and Wallace going out. Only Joe Smith, on average, shoots more free throws than Jerry Stackhouse. And this one pops out. 39-34 North Carolina. Coming up on the two-minute mark. Sura to the bucket. Got it back. Oh, what a rebound! And taken away, Donald Williams. Donald Banks hits. Boy, that's a big turnaround right there. Bob Sura misses the shot, looking for the foul on the rebound and not getting it. When North Carolina has been able to play in transition, they have been awfully, awfully tough. Sura for three. Missed it. And Luckman on the back of Pat Sullivan. Another open shot that does not go in the basket. And North Carolina going to come down and get some more free throws. Boy, a minute 38 left in this first half. Here's that play you're talking about, Dan, from Sura. We see Sullivan there grabbing Luckman by the shirt. And watch this. Sura just goes straight up in the air, brings the ball down, slapped away by Donald Williams, and now North Carolina off running. Sura looking at the official. And I did Sura just get a tee? I think Pat Kennedy. Or maybe it was Sura. We'll see. No, it's on Luckman. Kirk Luckman. So that would be his third foul. An unsporting technical. So now you've got Reed, Luckman, and Lewis all with three persons. And I think Luckman was complaining about the fact that Sullivan had him by the shirt down the court. You know, I was not a math major yes. at Catawba. But at the pace Florida State's going, I think they're going to run out of guys. <laughs> Donald Williams will be shooting the... Well, what no, Pat Sullivan Kennedy is first. saying, in the administration of the free throws, Sullivan going to the line to shoot the one-and-one. One. Or that's a two-shot foul. Florida State has over the 10-foul limit. But bunch. let's watch what happens. Sullivan and Luckman. Sullivan just blasts him out of the way. Now Luckman going to come over the back and get the foul. And Luckman was upset the time before that. Sullivan was grabbing him by the shirt on the way down the court. That time, Sullivan really laid a body on him. Lugman just has to have better discipline than that. The way you get back at a guy like Pat Sullivan is the same way you got hit in the first place. You can go ahead and blast the guy. You just don't say anything to the referee and pick up a technical. So the second shot by Donald is good. And Carolina leads by 10. Coming up tomorrow, key game in this great race of 95. Virginia to face Tim Duncan and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 1 p.m. tomorrow from Winston-Salem. That should be a dandy. A lot of grit and gristle between those two hard-nosed defensive teams. Well, those teams really get after one another. Not usually very pretty games, but great games. Stackhouse. And a travel. Stepped on the line. Nice oh, defense that time by Carroll to get his move his feet, get down on the baseline, prevent Stackhouse from getting by. Lenny went behind Tim Wood, and I couldn't <laughs> see him for the signal. Look at the free throws in this basketball game. 
That's not unusual. Collins for three. He's got 14. This North Carolina ball club goes to the foul line a lot because teams are just at their wits end trying to defend Stackhouse and Wallace, and Absolutely. you just have to foul them all the time. Donald for three. And we've got Sullivan, or Stackhouse. I think it's Stackhouse. Second on Jerry. Now, there is, this is what you call a crowd underneath the basket here. Watch Stackhouse matched up against Wooden. Good move by Stackhouse, but Wooden does a nice job with the pivot. Stackhouse in the middle of everybody. has got his right arm on Wooden, pushes Wooden away, and that's why he gets the personal foul. So Landry comes in. Stackhouse goes out with 59.4 seconds left here in the hand. That's two fouls on Stackhouse, two fouls on Wallace. And Derek Carroll will be stepping up to the line to shoot a one and one. Excellent free throw shooter, 85% in ACC competition is Derek Carroll. Well, these are opportunities upon which the Seminoles really have to capitalize. Won't see those two guys on the bench together very often, but with less than a minute remaining in the first half, no sense chancing the third personal foul on either one of those guys. See Carroll 79% overall this season. A redshirt sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina with five. Bob, in this last 59 seconds of this first half may be critical in this basketball game. The Seminoles have done a pretty nice job getting themselves back in position to make a run in the second half. They're down by five. I think that, you know, the, the one thing they don't want is have North Carolina like hit two threes in the last minute and go ahead by double figures at halftime. Carolina was up by 10 just a moment ago. FSU's cut it to five. Calabria up and off, and the rebound to Tim Wooden. Tim drops it, picks it up, here comes Avery Curry. Really important, I think, that the Seminoles get a good shot on this possession and then get back on defense. Shot clock at 15. Good defense by North Carolina. Seven, six to shoot. Long three. Rebound out of bounds to Carolina. Ten seconds left. Florida State not really executing very well in the half-court offense. Now North Carolina has the opportunity to stretch out the lead. McGinnis. Jeff up and good. And that's the hand. Jeff gets the friendly bounce. And the Tar Heels take a seven-point lead to the locker room at halftime. We've reached intermission in Tallahassee with a score. North Carolina, 46, and the Florida State Seminoles, 39. Home finale. Money Words hands it over to Jerry Stackhouse, and here we go in the second half. Corey Lewis and Andre Reed both back in the game with three personal fouls. Reed is going to match up against Rasheed Wallace, and North Carolina goes right there. And Wallace missed one. And Calabria gets the ball. Calabria, <laughs> you know, 10 points in the first half. He picks up the key loose balls. Rasheed misses two in a row. North Carolina finds the Seminoles in man to man. Sura pops to the left wing, uses the screen, misses the shot. It was a good screen, and again, that's what we talked about, Bob. That was an open opportunity. Of course, you're not going to hit them all, but Florida State's got to hit a better percentage than they have so far. Wallace, he's not going to miss three straight. No, not from that range. Seven for Rasheed. That's what we talked about, attacking aggressively. You know there's foul trouble on the inside. Go right after him. Sura lost the handle. And the foul will be called on North Carolina. I think Lenny spotted Dante Calabria with a hold. Now Calabria tried to get away with it. He grins. Lenny Wirtz. Not knew he did it. It's not fair, though, to jump over the scorer's table and hide. <laughs> the eagle eye of Lenny Wirtz. 
48-39, North Carolina leading. Zura, leaner. Well, he was looking for the foul right there and didn't get it, and as a result, Andre Reed gets the foul. That is not a good decision by Bob Sura. That's now four fouls on Andre Reed. So the list is growing ever longer for the Seminoles. Reed now with four, all post players in foul difficulty. Well, Wooden is the only guy that hasn't racked them up at the foul line, and now they're going to go right after Reed. Carolina turns it over this time. A four on two with Lewis. And that is a travel before the shot. McGinnis got it. Get in position to take a charge. Didn't have to worry about it. The travel came first. Well, this is very poor execution on the fast break. Two guys right together on the break. It was a four on two, but Greer just handed the ball to Lewis. Lewis was looking for the rebound. That really surprised him. Well, you know, with the positioning, Dan, it, it turned into a two on two because they had everybody covered. Florida State breaks it out again. And Lamar Greer in the land of the big men had no success. And you could just see Pat Kennedy's shoulder sag on that one. His team not doing a very good job making decisions on the offensive end. And we're going to get a foul against Collins. That will be the second on James. Number 23, James Collins. It's got to be very frustrating for Pat Kennedy. You cannot say that his team has not had its opportunities. They have. They have not been able, they did not get the ball to go in the basket with some open opportunities in the first half. And here in the second half, they simply haven't made good decisions. Donald Williams scores his seventh. Here's a look at the Donald's numbers. What a great game he had against Clemson last week. 24 to six threes. Williams is one of those scary guys that the way he can shoot the basketball, he can light you up for 25 or 30. And there's not a thing in the world you can do about it if he's on. Reed inside, Lewis puts it in. Corey with eight. Florida State trailing by eight. Corey Lewis was a key factor early in the basketball game, and when he went out with those personal fouls, they lost that inside offense. And they would be well advised to continue to try to go to him if they can. McGinnis. Stackhouse. <laughs> You know, Reed is living on borrowed time in there. He just knocked yeah. McGinnis right down. Collins goes up top. Lewis can't control it, but Sura grabs it. I guess Andre feels they're not going to call them all on senior day. It's out of bounds. And Lenny Wirtz says the ball belongs to Florida State. <laughs> of course, Dean Smith, he wants more than all of them call, <laughs> at least on Florida State. <laughs> 49-41, Tar Heels. North Carolina zones the inbounds. You better find him. James with his third three-pointer. He's got 17. Collins, fifth best in the ACC in three-point percentage. Bob and the Seminoles just hanging around, hanging around. If they can execute defensively and hit some shots. Stackhouse on the cut. Lewis gets it out to Lamar Greer. Sura thought about the three. Now they'll reset. A three and a zero in blue changed his mind. <laughs> yes. Inside off Collins' hands out of bounds. Here's Pat Sullivan coming back for the Tar Heels. This time at Stackhouse to get a quick rest. Tar Heels by five. North Carolina with three losses this season, all ACC road games. Lewis fights for it. Sora saves it. Three on one. Nice dish and the lay-in by Greer. 
you got to look at the whole package for Bob Sura right there. Tremendous speed, picking up the ball, great acceleration on the dribble, excellent decision in transition, and a good pass to finish it off. Wallace puts it in. Rashid with nine, great entry pass from the wing. 51-46. Andre Reed asking for some help in there, and he's right. You can't let Rasheed Wallace have that much time to play around shooting the ball. Greer to Sura. Bob reverses. Oh, Tipped out off Sullivan. Time out on the floor. We have 14.58 to play with the Tar Heels leading Florida State by five. The Tar Heels by five, and now, as they say, you make the call. Did this ball hit the rim or did it not? Boy, that's awfully close. It was ruled that the ball did not hit the rim, so there's 11 seconds on the shot clock. The ball hits the rim. Florida State gets a new 35. McGinnis has. And unfortunately for the Seminoles, that ball hit the rim oh. and didn't go in the basket, but there's McGinnis with a double dribble, and Lenny works right on top of the play. Stackhouse will come back. 14-47 left. The Tar Heels, 51-46. You know, I'm wondering if yes. McGinnis has an assist today. He did not have one at halftime, and that's his second turnover. Put that under the category of man bites dog. Usually it's the <laughs> other way around. He plays turnover free. Reed, nice fake. Gets the bucket. Boy, that's an aggressive move by Andre Reed. And Reed playing with those four personal fouls, certainly playing without any fear. Wallace up and in. Boy, did you see Lewis come across? Try to swat it away. Yeah, but you know, if that shot misses, you know who has the rebound in the dunk? Jerry Stackhouse. Number 42. McGinnis with the poke away. <laughs> Syrup inside, flopping on the ground, trying to draw the foul against Wallace. Syrup spends about three fifths of his time, it seems. Oh, Rashid Wallace, my goodness, he really did bounce Bob Syrup down. Syrup's got a point there. 2,000 points, 3,000 floor burns. <laughs> nice three from Lamar Greer. 53-51, and Dan, that point you made a minute ago about the Seminoles hanging around, got this crowd energized. Bob, they've cut off the Tar Heel transition game. Stackhouse to the bucket. Yes, sir. Jerry. Now with 11. Lewis just simply can't stay with them out there. Somebody's got to come and help. Tar Heels smart to exploit that. Here's Reed. Lewis at the other end. Andre Reed follows and scores. The senior from Miami pulls Florida State within two. Well, you know when you have four personal fouls, that's the way you ought to play, just very aggressively. Don't worry about getting that fifth one. Don't do anything stupid, but get in there and play aggressively. Stackhouse, blocked by Reed! Stackhouse fights for it. Picked up by, by Williams. Here's McGinnis. Stackhouse going to the bucket, kicks it out. McGinnis for three with a man flying at him, and he hits it. Jeff with 13. What a great play by Stackhouse. He made a great play on D on the defensive end to create that steal. And then on the offensive end, we said somebody's got to help Corey Lewis. Well, somebody did. And so what happens? He throws it out for the three. For the moment, that really ta has taken the wind out of the sails of this crowd. Here's Andre, rejected by Wallace. Reed fights to get it back. Scoots it over to Wallace to Sura, and he draws the foul on Stackhouse. 
Well, I tell you, the big fella from Miami is laying it all out there today. It's time to play fast takes. Identify the player that appeared in the Continental Airlines halftime feature call 1-800-836-3ACC within 24 hours to enter. And the secret code is... It's a secret. How do I know? I can't, I can't say. Looks like it's 91 to me, Bob. <laughs> Sura missing the free throw. And here's Landry coming in for Calabria. Bob looking for his 11th. Missed it, but read the rebound. Boy, Florida State, Dan, has had so many opportunities today. Bob, we've played more than eight minutes in this second half, and Sura hasn't scored yet. So much for that. Okay, so much for that. Two-point game. That's his third three-pointer today. What a shot. Oh, 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 my goodness. The hook by Rashid. He was, for the most part, shooting down <laughs> at the goal. <laughs> That's what you call your classic jump hook. 60-56. But Carolina's had the answer every time FSU is challenged. Here's Collins. The bank. James with 19. We're just going up and down now, Bob. He walks! And we have a timeout on the floor. 10.56 to play, and a two-point game. We'll return after this message from Captain up to the official airline, the ACC. 10,000-plus 10, 10, in Tallahassee, and the Tar Heels lead Florida State by two. Dean Smith, once again, Dan, has lost the services of guard Donald Williams. He just went back in the North Carolina locker room. That's the second time that Donald has gone back during action in this game today. Bob, and we still don't know what's wrong, but he gives all the appearance of somebody who's suffering with some stomach problems, a little virus or flu or something like that. Sura. Controlled by Calabria. Carolina is able to protect the lead. Sura, oh boy, sure. dangerous. <laughs> that really was. Close to that third foul. Here's McGinnis driving. Up and off the window. And what a game McGinnis has had. He is now six for six from the field. Well, you think back to that Cincinnati game he played in Charlotte back in December that he was so magnificent. He scored 23 at the Charlotte Coliseum. North Carolina now back in the zone defense. Sura, 4-3. Zone defense, North Carolina has tended to be passive in this game. The Seminoles have gotten some open shots, and unlike in the first half, they've hit them in the second half, and Jerry Stackhouse trying to get the game stopped so he can tie his shoe. And certainly, if Stackhouse wants to tie his shoe, McGinnis is going to wait for it. Sura tried for the steal, but Landry controls. Carolina just now getting into its offense with 13 on the shot clock. Wallace with Reed draped on it to Calabria. Inside Stackhouse, and that is going to be a bucket and a foul. Corey Lewis picks up his fourth. North Carolina does it. Look at all, all look at those four white shirts in the lane. Lewis has to respond to the, the penetration, and as a result, Stackhouse is open. Watch this. Lewis loses sight of Stackhouse. Now he turns back, but it's too late. Jerry Stackhouse taking the ball to the basket with great strength. That's four fouls now on Lewis. And four on Reed. They're both in the ballgame. Jerry completes the three-point play to give Carolina a four-point lead at 65-61. 9-10 remaining. Sura down in a heap. Boy, Wallace just pushed him right down. Sura motioning for Greer to go to the other side. Now Bob gets it up top. Guarded by Landry. 
Shot clock at six. Five. Reed takes a dribble. They've got to get it up quickly. Collins beats the buzzer and missed the shot. Sura takes it away, falls out of bounds. Carolina by four with 8.36 to play. Now, Florida State has gotten themselves back in the game, Bob. And they've got to make sure that they play well on the defensive end of the court. And North Carolina going to take its time now. Remember, the two inside guys for Florida State both have four personal fouls. McGinnis. Stack house. Back out it goes to Landry. A three. Oh, and he hits it. Boy, that's a big basket. You know, people talk about North Carolina not having much of a bench, but I'm telling you, Pierce Landry comes in and contributes, and that is a big, big basket. 68-61. Landry has drawn the assignment now against Sura. And they kick it out to Greer. He hits a three. Lamar Greer with 10. His season high is 11. The Seminoles have to look for some defensive stops right now, Bob. North Carolina's offense has been in high gear all day, and Florida State has to find a way, at least for a few possessions, to close it down. McGinnis had a block from behind by Lewis. Florida State could not get it back. Here's Jeffrey, the runner. Good. 17 for McGinnis. He had 20 in the first game in Chapel Hill. 70-64 Tar Heels. North Carolina in the man-to-man. -man. Florida State going to look for Sura in this situation. Here's Collins. Lewis keeps it alive and scores. Dorian double figures now with 10. Bob, you're trading baskets, are the Seminoles. The Tar Heels can trade baskets all day long. They're ahead. Florida State's got to get some stops. The guards have scored the last two possessions for the Heels. This is Calabria. His first second half basket. 72-66. North Carolina goes back to the zone. So immediately you're thinking Sura. And he's tucked away in the right corner and Stackhouse intercepts. That's just a bad pass by Collins. You just can't throw the ball that far against the zone defense with a guy like Stackhouse playing down on that wing. Here's Jerry to the middle. Calabria gets it back. Missed the shot. Held ball. Look at Lewis fighting Stackhouse for it. And the possession arrow will give the ball to Florida State. Good battle inside from Lewis and Stackhouse. We have a timeout on the floor with 5.46 to play. The Tar Heels lead at 72-66. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. Here's a look at the You'll Love This Stuff play, and it comes compliments of Corey Lewis. Well, certainly the fans of Florida State love this particular stuff. Lewis defending the penetration that time by knocking the ball away. Here you get another look at it. Corey Lewis steps into the middle. Jeff McGinnis elects to try anyway. And as magnificent as the block was, Dan, as you look at the scoring and where the points have come from today, you talked about the defensive stop. Well, they got it with the block, but they couldn't get the ball back. Corey Lewis doing everything he can. You look at that scoring distribution there. Florida State scoring from the three-point line. And, you know, the interesting thing about this, North Carolina went to the free-throw line, Bob, 23 times in the first half. But thus far in this half, Florida State with only three team fouls. North Carolina with only two. Not as much aggressive defense being played in the second half. You mentioned Florida State trading baskets. Each team with 11 field goals this half. Collins misses. Here's Reed scoring and a foul on Sullivan. Boy, he has been a big factor in the second half. That's now six points in the second half for Andre Reed. 
Reed looking for the ball, not getting it. Keeps the ball alive, gets it off the board, draws the foul from Sullivan, sticks it in the basket. That was a big basket by Andre Reed. Florida State really in desperate need of a score right there. Winston Harris, Andre Reed's mom. She's pleased about that particular play. Sura tried to steal it, but it belongs to Carolina. 5.15 left. 72-68 Tar Heels. And for Pat Kennedy's troops, they've got to button up on the defensive end of the court. Gallant set up on McGinnis. Wallace. Landry's got it. Great feed. Landry sticks it back in. Here's Landry with nine. Two huge baskets here in the last couple of minutes for Pierce. Well, he hit that three, and then just he, he was the reason they were able to recover that ball. He scrapped and got his hands on it a couple of times. Lewis. 74-70. Florida State playing very well on the offensive end. North Carolina not having much success stopping the Seminoles, but again, the Tar Heels are the ones who are ahead. They can trade the baskets. That will be the fourth on Reed. The fifth, excuse me. Reed has done a great job hanging in this basketball game. Picked up three fouls in the first half. His fourth foul very early in the second half. He's played a long time with four fouls. And he has been a big factor in the second half. Six points in this half, eight rebounds for the game. Most of those coming in the second half. Again, struggling inside against Rasheed Wallace. Right there, he wraps his arms around him, and that's what the official underneath the basket sees, and that's the correct call. Now, remember, Corey Lewis also has four personal fouls. Stackhouse takes it right to the bucket. Once again, the North Carolina offense scores. Collins inside. There is a bucket for James. Goaltending on Rasheed. All right, Bob, I'm not going to talk about trading baskets anymore. <laughs> We've still got a four-point game, 76-72. North Carolina is going to get two every time down. Florida State's got to try to come back by getting three every time down. There's a foul against Luckman. That's his fourth. 349 to play. And we have an official's timeout here in Tallahassee. So the Tar Heels ranked third in the country, leading FSU by four. Back for the final 349 in a moment. Let's look at an MCI proof positive instant replay. And Rasheed Wallace with just a great jump hook down at the basket, or at least level with the basket, it seemed. That was not an easy shot, a jump hook from that distance. Certainly gives you the idea of the kind of offensive ability possessed by Mr. Wallace. Proof positive. Proof positive. That if you shoot down at the goal, <laughs> you got a pretty good chance of making this one up and off. Lewis rebound. Well, well there's the defensive the stop. stop. Yep. 76 72. Now it's important that they convert on the offensive end. They've executed very well on the offensive end this half. Each team shooting well above 50%. Sura around Landry. Inside the Luckman. Gets it back. Jammed up. And a foul on Landry. That was pretty good defense from Pierce. Nations Bank, a corporate partner in the 96 Olympics, presents this Olympic trivia question. How many UNC players and coaches associated with the 76 Olympic gold medal men's basketball team. We'll have the answer in just a moment. Second foul on Landry. Third foul on Landry. All right, does it count if someone was a UNC player then, but is a UNC coach now? Does he count as two? We'll have to take that under advisement. Don't ask me these things. <laughs> That's a trivia question. That's not the trivia question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see the numbers. Sura, way short. Landry the rebound. 
And Sura, great effort. Didn't come away with the ball, though. Standing ovation for Sura. Those fans, the number one fan, Peggy. One suspects there would have been a louder ovation had that three gone in the basket, though, Bob. Oh, yes. Yeah. The boy, they really needed that one. Now Jeff McGinnis working on freshman Lamar Greer. Remember, Corey Lewis and Luckman, each with four personal fouls. Stackhouse gets it into Wallace. And it goes in the bucket. 15 for Rasheed. <laughs> what an impressive play. 78-72. Two thirty-six left. Bob with the penetration. Wallace got a piece of it. And the FSU fans, including Pat Kennedy screaming, they should have gotten some points out of this. Sir gets down in the lane. Rasheed Wallace gets up and blocks the shot. The ball goes off James Collins out of bounds. So the North Carolina defense able to respond on that particular occasion. Seminoles stuck on 72. Stackhouse stripped, and Sura comes up with it. Good decision by Sura to control that basketball. A three would really help the Seminoles. I was going right to say, now. do you start thinking three right away? Inside, Lewis. Sura got that ball up in the air on the tip. Here's Calabria leading it out. Stackhouse. And Luckman just rips it out of bounds. A minute 47 to play. Bob, Florida State had a close-in opportunity that time. Not necessarily an easy one because North Carolina's defenders were there. But boy, you figure you got to make that shot. Calabria. There's Williams, who's obviously returned to the locker room. A minute 40 to play. Of course, North Carolina doesn't need to be in any hurry right here. And they spread to the four corners. I don't think you want to commit a foul now. With 10 seconds left on the shot clock, all you'll do is give them another 35. Tough defense without foul. They oh, my! A spinning shot from McGinnis. And Carolina leads by eight. Well, now I think you're looking at some three-point baskets, Bob. You're gonna get twos, you gotta get them fast. And Collins hits the three and Florida State burns its final timeout. James Collins with 24, and it's a five-point Carolina lead. We'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Our nation's back trivia question, how many UNC players and coaches associated with the 76 Olympic gold medal men's basketball team? And the answer is four players and two coaches. Phil Ford, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge. Right on that Carolina bench is the Tar Heels lead it by five. Is this what you were asking me a little bit? Yes, sir. Does Phil Ford count as two? Well, as good as he was, he can be counted either <laughs> way. 105 left. There's Bill Guthridge in his 28th year. At North Carolina. 80 75. Tar Heels lead. Pressure from Florida State. Well, Florida State, if they don't get the steal, they got to get fouls right away. Oh, they got the steal! Greer to Collins. Greer for three. Yes! yes! Lamar Greer makes it a two point game. Calabrian traffic. Now to McGinnis. North Carolina 80, Florida State 78. Now you don't want to foul now. Tough defense without fouling. Make them shoot the ball. You're going to get it back. Carolina wants a timeout. 13 seconds on the shot clock. 34.1 on the game clock. 
Bob, now this is a very interesting situation in this half. Each team with only five personal fouls. So if Florida State fouls, all they do right at the moment is reset the shot clock. And since there's only 34.1 seconds left, obviously the shot clock would go off. There's a 21 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So the Florida State Seminoles, we've been talking about defensive stops the entire second half. What they've got to do if they can get the defensive stop, they will have about 20 seconds if they can recover the basketball to tie or win the game. So the defensive effort for Florida State, paramount right here. I do not think the Seminoles want to commit the foul. If they do, what that will mean is they'll have to commit the foul, another foul right away to try to put North Carolina on the line. You can win this game without fouling if you can get the defensive stop. Dan, what are your thoughts on the out-of-bounds defense for Florida State? Well, I think Florida State would be in a good position if you tried to pressure the out-of-bounds pass. In other words, North Carolina, one of the best teams in the country at getting that five-second violation. So for Florida State, it would certainly be a good idea to try to create the five-second violation. You don't want to give up an easy basket. But I think you start your defense as far away from the basket as you can. Or at least that's an option. Lamar Greer's steal and three-pointer is pulled Florida State with it, too. 13 seconds to shoot. The Tar Heels played into Wallace. Again, there's 10 seconds left on the shot clock. McGinnis to Stackhouse. No good. Florida State's got it. 17 seconds left. They have left. no timeouts. Florida State has to run it here. Sura with McGinnis on it. Eight seconds. He's got to get to the basket. 80-78, Carolina. Poke away. Steal by Stackhouse. McGinnis knocked it away. With six tenths of a second left. Florida Jeff. State could not get off a final shot because of Jeff McGinnis' intense defense. Boy, he just had Sir and wouldn't let him go. North Carolina timeout. I mean, you're talking about one of the premier one-on-one -on -one players in this conference, and McGinnis just wouldn't let him go. McGinnis reaches around and knocks the ball away, then Stackhouse is able to come up with it. Collins very nearly comes up with the steal right there, but even if he steals it there, Bob, there's only six-tenths of a second left. Dean Smith calls that timeout because all his team really has to do right now is get the ball inbounds. The only way Florida State can win the game is to steal the inbounds pass and let off a long, long shot that goes in the basket. That's a story of opportunities all afternoon long for Florida State. They, had, they missed a lot of easy, open shots in the first half, and they certainly had their opportunities in the second half. And North Carolina was on number three in the country without very good reason. We saw the replay of the steal, the poke away by McGinnis. My thoughts, too, on that defensive play by Jeff was long before we saw the poke away, how he stayed with Sura. Florida State was out of timeouts, and he really had Sura pinned back in midcourt, and valuable time is running off the clock. Jeff McGinnis just with a super, super basketball game today. So now Carolina with six tenths to get it in. Calabria into Williams, and the ball game is over. The Tar Heels escape Tallahassee with a victory. Final score, Carolina 80, Florida State 78. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser.